Um, got a lot to get into here today. The death of Road Warrior Animal today. We don't have a lot of details. Family says they'll they'll release a statement later on this afternoon. But Road Warriors were something else. I mean, they did a lot of different things during their career. I just a few years ago was watching a bunch of the. NWA shows were available in the WWE Network, and the Road Warriors were just the greatest. They came in, and they absolutely obliterated these jobbers. Just destroyed them in seconds. Their music playing the whole time, although on the WWE Network, for per- per- virtually every show. I mean, it's a, it's a toss-up what kind of music you're going to get, but they'd come out here, and they'd destroy these jobbers, and... Saw the angle where they did the the weightlifting contest with the powers of pain. An animal got his eye injured and came back with the deal. And they're supposed to be heels, but nobody boos them. And there was so much great stuff. And then, of course, ultimately, for I think a lot of the people listening to this right now, I mean, for many of the younger listeners, your best memories of, of the Road Warriors are actually when they were the Legion of Doom and the WWF. And that was hit and miss. I mean, we went to watch those superstar shows, and what do we see? The Legion of Doom and a puppet. He came out here. Somebody's brilliant idea was to have Paul Ellering manage them. And how did the Road Warriors, what did the Road Warriors need to get so angry? Well, they needed a puppet to motivate them. That was like the storyline. And it sucked. But what sucked even worse was... When they returned again during the Monday Night Wars and Road Warrior Hawk, I mean, he'd had personal issues throughout his entire career, but they came back and they made that into a storyline. And Hawk was like a drug addict and they did the storyline where he climbed up on top of the Titan Tron and and fell off and died, but he didn't die. I mean, it was just, it was horrific. But Animal, through all of this, the thing with Hawk and Animal was... Hawk was like always the really wacky, crazy guy, and he would still destroy people and everything like that. But if you ever listen to a Hawk promo, it's like, what in God's name is this guy talking about? You never knew. But Road Warrior Animal was always like, he was the, what would the word be? The period at the end of the sentence, for sure, when he came to Well, the sure, that, but he was, he was the, the uh, straight and narrow is probably the wrong term, but he was the straight man <laughs> yeah. in the Road Warriors. And no matter what stupid stuff was happening, what crazy stuff was happening with Hawk, what goofy promo he was cutting, Animal was always just the badass. And he'd finish that promo, and then he'd go out there and he'd maul people. And even after even after Hawk passed away, I mean, Animal showed up all over the place. You'd, you'd see him in Impact. He came back to WWE. We got a, a magazine cover here that, that Mike is holding up. He had he had the appearance in uh, in where was it? It was um, uh, he was an impact. He showed up. He was at, he was at AEW actually several years ago. But I mean, there was a show that I watched. It might have been. I mean, we watched so many of these retro shows. I can't even remember what show that we were watching. But I think it might have been one of the WCWs there at the end. But Animal showed up, and he was like the highlight of the match. And this was like in the year two thousand two thousand one. It's like. He was just out there showing everybody else how to do it. But very, very sad story. We don't know details. 60 years old. It absolutely sucks. Anything else you'd like to add about the Road Warriors, Mike? They're just way too young. You know, the Road Warriors, just an incredible team. And this, you know, this cover, you know, this wasn't long after they had become a team. And they had already taken everybody by storm for as much as Hulk Hogan was a, a singles revelation in the 80s, the Road Warriors were just as much and meant just as much for a lot of people out there. Just an incredible team. Uh, the Russians, the Midnight Express, no matter who it was that you put them up against, it was incredible. And, you know, uh, Joe Laurinaitis, the man, uh, was a part of a family that, you know, it gets snickered about because of, you know, the character that Johnny Ace became. But, you know, Johnny Ace was in the wrestling business. Uh, their brother, uh, Marcus was the Terminator at this point, like right now in 1987, uh, both Johnny Ace and, and Marcus were kind of revitalizing themselves and, and trying to like claw their careers out right now in UWF that Jim Cur- uh, Crockett had bought them. They were all working. All three brothers were working for Jim Crockett promotions at that time. And obviously they all reached different levels of success with Joe being the biggest success. But, you know, unlike Hawk, 
who had a lot of problems outside the ring, you didn't have those problems with Animal. And in a lot of ways, you're right when you said he was he was the straight man of the team because he did play a lot more straight and narrow than, than Hawk did. Not to say that he was an angel or anything, but when you hear of all these stories from all these great wrestlers, a lot of them have terrible, terrible, terrible family lives. And you don't have that with Joe Laurinaitis. In fact, what you have is a pretty good guy that was said to be a pretty damn good father. And... Obviously, his kid became a, a, a real athlete of note at Ohio State and later on uh, in the NFL with the St. Louis Rams, and I'm not sure exactly who else he may have played for in his career, but made it to an all-pro level, if I'm not mistaken. So that's really the best story that you can tell about Joe Laurinaitis, Road Warrior Animal, is what kind of person he was outside of the ring and how his family treated him, as well as the incredible heights that the Road Warriors got to because, hey, there's always going to be a Road Warrior pop. The same way there's always a gorilla position, everybody's always going to be lost after that road warrior pop 